Dear colleagues, I am very pleased to take part in this conference. I am Natalia Bezberodova, a main Ukrainian folklore student of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies Department of the University of Alberta. In my presentation, I would like uh, to talk about Facebook and social media in general and Euromaidan, about the reflection of the events of November 2013 and February 2014 in uh, social media. My observations are made on a content analysis of um, private posts uh, published in a uh, Facebook newsline and collected day by day, started uh, early December until late May. Uh, I would like to speak briefly about the main aspects of the role of social media on Maidan, such as initial impact as source of information, dialogue and solidarity, coordination platform, space for reflection and production of new narratives. Also, I would like uh, to refer briefly to the analysis and conclusion about role of other social media in Facebook and that was done at the same time. By the end of the most tragic week on Maidan, uh, that was exactly three months from its very beginning, and at this week uh, more than 100 protesters were shot by sniper and uh, February 22nd, uh, that was the day exactly when Yanukovych fled the country. At that day, many uh, users posed their reflection with the recognition to the person uh, who is considered to be uh, the organizer or the driving force of Euromaidan, posting his invitation to join and start the protest. Um, this slide contains um, original posts, and in particular, here is Andrei Bondar, who is Ukrainian writer, and he mentioned the Facebook post as the uh, original uh, source uh, that we can refer even later, and discussing the uh, whether we can uh, diminish or exaggerate the role of social media. During the most active phase of uh, Maidan events, uh, Ukrainian media sometimes used the information uh, developed and elaborated in the, um, Facebook groups. Um, and the example on this slide, there is a map as an infographics uh, developed by a Euromaidan group that contain not only the uh, day, but also the time of the event happened to reflect the, the situation. Another map is an example uh, how the social media reflect the attitude in general in the country and in every particular region towards uh, Euromaidan, who is supporting them, who is not. And uh, this analysis is done by Nikolai Tkachenko based on a contact network, which is the Russian-based social media, very similar to Facebook according to the visual and function features. And it covers uh, 400,000 respondents in different regions of Ukraine. Uh, three main social media used by Ukrainian citizens are Facebook, Adnoklasniki and Vkontakte. According to the number of the sub subscribers, uh, Vkontakte is the biggest social media and it has auditorium of mainly youth. Uh, Adnoklasniki is also Russian-based social media and it has mostly representatives from the real sector of economy. And uh, Facebook has the majority of urban citizens engaged in creative activities in academia. It considered that about two-thirds of Facebook Ukrainian profiles are citizens of Kyiv city and region. And on this uh, slide and infographics, you can see in yellow uh, the number of the uh, subscribers that supporting Euromaidan, red who is against the Euromaidan, and black line is a uh, person supporting right police barecode. According to Igor Stokos' analysis, uh, Facebook and Twitter was the most important social media on Maidan, as uh, Twitter provides news quite promptly, and Facebook played a consolidating role, uh, as it hosts uh, pages uh, for coordination medical aid, uh, for after Maidan activity, uh, and provides personal pages of opposition leader who continue the dialogue with the uh, society after their turning into acting power. Uh, this slide provides original posts of Facebook users discussing the role of social media and recent transformation in Ukraine. In particular, editor of chief of uh, internet newspaper Censornet discussing the uh, control process initiated by Ukrainian custom and national uh, post office because of the password disappeared and the uh, control was initiated because of a Facebook claim and uh, has to um, provide the report in Facebook as well. 
Uh, social media also was used as space for reflection and reaction to the situation and uh, producing visual uh, creative forms, uh, the same as poster that was used on Maidan. Uh, the uh, posters, uh, as an example, you see uh, the reaction to the propaganda language from one side and uh, self-reflection of social media users from the other side. Uh, usually, uh, ironic and critical visual reflection forms uh, the anonymous. That is according to the Bakhtin concept uh, of uh, common love as a reaction to the aggression. In order to reflect, uh, to react, and to the assess the situation, uh, many uh, Facebook posts refer to different literary works or historical events or public figures uh, in order to give the importance and assessment to the situation and uh, to um, articulate their own feeling or their own attitude as it was percepted within the society. Uh, visual means used as an uh, avatar by social media users uh, helped um, in the way of uh, expression, uh, the solidarity of expression, the feelings. And the pictures provided on this slide was uh, the most common during January, February 2014 uh, among Ukrainian users uh, as the expression of uh, their feeling of their reaction of the most tragic event that uh, happened on Maidan. Uh, starting from early April, another uh, type of pictures was spread among uh, Facebook users as a visualization of solidarity. As you can see on the picture, um, the background of um, Ukrainian uh, symbols, national symbols and Ukrainian flag and belonging to the uh, state and to the country heritage was important. And um, that is also was the response to the situation as that is was a new developed uh, software that uh, allowed any person to create their own picture. Together with the referral to the known literary work and to the recognized historical events, uh, Euromaidan produced uh, another type of narratives of first eyewitnesses uh, in the gender of testimonial. Uh, speaking about testimonial, I refer to the definition of John Beverly uh, uh, saying a testimonial narrative as a first-person account of real situation that involves repression, marginalization and violence, intending to function as a narrative that bears witnesses to and denounces human rights abuses. Um, during Euromaidan, um, that was um, a numerous publications about uh, such types of narratives and the most known project of the genre is Yelude or in English it will be translated as there are people um, done by Kristina Berdinskich. She's a journalist resigned from her job at the beginning of Euromaidan due to the new administrative policy and on December the 1st as she started the project just collecting short stories about not known people uh, about the participants of Euromaidan and published on Facebook. And uh, this project became very um, popular and very known and now published as a, lit uh, as a book so it uh, came into the literature. I think that is important according to Walter Benjamin, who is speaking about the storytellers only in the situation where um, there are a dialogue, where uh, there are listeners who listen to the story and that type um, storytellers became the subject of the culture. Um, I think um, uh, to continue about the topic and probably to develop it into my uh, MA thesis project. But at the moment, I thank you for your attention.